Hello and welcome to the Science Oxford live stream for British Science Week. My name is Kat. I'm joined here today behind the scenes by Emily, Sarah and Ian. They're helping me with the tech stuff. They're going to show me your comments and operate the cameras and stuff today here at the Science Oxford Centre. So usually during British Science Week, Science Oxford will be really busy coming to your schools or perhaps hosting you at visits here at our centre. But due to COVID this year, unfortunately, we can't do that. So we thought instead that we'll do a live stream and bring you to us virtually. Just a reminder that at the beginning, we did bring up a picture for you. I can see some of you have already put in your thoughts and comments about that. That's great. We are going to come back to that question, which was, what did you think that that camera, the picture in the camera we showed you was showing us? So we're going to come back to that one shortly. So today we are giving you a bit of a tour of our exploration zone. So that's the room that I'm in right now. That is at our Science Oxford Centre. And everyone who comes here on a school visit gets a chance to come and visit this room. Now, I know there are some specific schools that have already registered today. So I'm just going to give a shout out to some of those. So I know we have got Great Kimball C of E School, Brill Church of England School, Europa School Class, the Downley School, Wooten St. Peter's Primary, Barley Hill School, Cuddington and Dinton C of E School, Abingdon Prep School, Bayard Hill, Cuddington and Dinton C of E, we've got you on here twice, uh, St. Joseph's Catholic Primary School, Carterton, and Our Lady of Lords Catholic Primary. There may even be some others, so thank you so much for joining us today. So before we begin, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about the exploration zone. It has the name Explore in it. So this room is all about you using the skills that it takes to do science and be a scientist. Things like asking questions, being curious and trying out challenges. So when you get to these exhibits, it's not going to flood you with information. Instead, it's quite open ended and we want you to figure out how stuff works by getting hands on and enjoying the exhibits that are here. So we're going to highlight a few of them today and show you a bit of behind the scenes stuff. It is going to be interactive. So there's going to be times where we're going to pause and ask you to discuss in your classrooms and then your teacher can collect your comments put them in the chat for us and I'll be able to see some of your answers so we're going to head over to our first exhibit which is just over here so this exhibit is called guess what and it's a bit like the game guess who so usually I would play this game with a partner, um, but we can't do that today. But how it would work regularly is if I picked one of these cool fossils and rocks. So let's say, for example, that I picked this shiny one up here. I really like this one. I would have a partner. So on the other side, they can see the same thing. And what we would do is they would ask me questions. So they might say something like, uh, is it round? And I would say, no, my object is not round. So they could close all the flaps of things that are round. And eventually we're asking questions like scientists do, classifying, thinking about things like shape and colour, then they would be able to eliminate all the ones that aren't it. And hopefully we end up with them guessing the correct one. But as we can't play it like that today, we're going to put a bit of a different spin on it so that I can play it with you. And we're going to do odd one out. So we're going to show you four pictures of, some of these rocks and fossils that we chose. And we want you to discuss with your class, which is the odd one out and why. So the why is the most important bit. Each one has a reason or many reasons why it's the odd one out. But why is what I'm interested in. So I'm going to give you about two and a half minutes to chat in your class, get your teachers to pop your ideas in the comments. And we'll see you back here shortly.
Okay, welcome back. So I can see some of your comments here on this tablet. So I'm going to go through a couple of them. So someone thinks two because it is smooth. Yeah, this one here is nice and smooth compared to the others, isn't it? Some people saying it's a fossil. We've got some experts in the audience. Um, second one because it's smooth and the others are bumpy. The one on the left is dull and the others are shiny. That's a really good observation. Yeah. Uh, so we're saying the second one is odd because it's smooth and the first one because of its colour. So yeah, colour is another really great way to classify them. The curly one on the left says Tristan. Absolutely, yeah. This one is a bit curly, isn't it? Um, said B because it's the smoothest out of all of them with no bumpy edges. Yeah. Daisy thinks the second one because it looks less like a rock and more smooth. And finally, we've got uh, one looks artificial. I like that word. So that one looks a little bit less real. Really, really good. We're going to put all your comments up here. Um, really, really good hard thinking there. Doing exactly what scientists do, which is to look at different rocks and fossils, try and describe them and find the differences, perhaps even guess why. So some of you have said that you think one is a fossil. Others used to be alive. Some of them weren't. Really, really good observations. OK, we are going to go to another exhibit now. So this is one of the favourites here at Science Oxford. If you want to follow me, we're going to head there. Okay, so we are here at our air table. How this works is we've got a few different materials and using this tablet here, I can turn on air that comes out of here and shoots upwards. So I've got a control here that I can turn up. I'm going to put it on a sort of medium setting. You might be able to hear that. If I hold one of these over here, you'll see that we have got some air coming out of here now. So for this one, this one is also an interactive challenge with you. We have got some pictures of two designs that we have made. So we're going to bring a picture for you to have a look at. And what I want you to do is to discuss with your group, we've got two things to discuss. Which one will fly the highest and which design do you think will hover? But most importantly, why? So you've got three things to give me, A or B, which design will fly the highest, which will hover, and why you think that. So maybe four things and a reason for each one. It could be that you think A, for example, would do both the best, but I'm more interested in why. So really thinking like a scientist, making a prediction. When I put this object on the air table, what do I think will happen and why? So I'm gonna give you about two and a half minutes again, just to chat with your group, let your teachers know, pop it in the chat, and then we'll test it out.
Okay, welcome back. So let's see some of your thoughts then on A and B. So we think that A will hover because it's shaped like a fan. That A will hover because of the holes and B will fly because it doesn't have holes. A propeller design. No holes. So I'm lo loving how people are thinking about how the air is going to go through these different materials. Yeah, so thinking about weight. Like a helicopter. Again, how the air will go through them. More people thinking about weight. Amazing. We'll catch more of the air. That's a really good description. Yeah, that perhaps this one here. Oh, so I saw someone say that the cone inside is hollow on this one, a bit like a UFO. Um, oh, aerodynamic. What a great science word. Yeah, so thinking about how much space things take up in the shape and how the air will move around them. One of them has more like wings, which will make them stable, so they won't be able to hover, but B might fly. And again, it's got no holes. These are all really, really good answers. There's only one way to find out, isn't it? Which is to test them. So I'm going to test A and B. Let's do both first. So I'm going to do A. I saw the word up thrust there as well. Another good one. Uh, I'm going to do A first to see how high it goes. Then I'll do B to see how high it goes. Okay, so we're doing test for highest first. So here we go. Three, two, one. I did kind of a cool spin thing. I've got some here in case they fly away. I am just going to turn it upside down just in case people wanted to test it that way as well. See if that makes a difference. Okay, that didn't work at all. So let's do it this way. Just testing some variables here, making sure that we are doing a fair experiment. So I'll do it the same way as the first time. Let's see how high it goes. Not super high. It did a cool spinny thing. I am just going to pick this one back up. Let's test B now for how high it goes. So this is just a coffee filter. So you're right, it's very, very light. So let's do it this way up first. Oh, that went super high. That might have even gone out of the camera for a minute there. I'll just flip it over to make sure that we test it both ways. This is more like a parachute. I saw someone mention that word as well. Okay, so that definitely went higher, which I think some of you did predict by talking about surface area. Let's test now for hovering. So for me, something that hovers goes to a certain height and then sort of hangs out there for a little bit. So let's see what we think will happen with that. Oh, I'll do it the other way around. I'll do A first, pointy side up, because that's what we did before. Okay, it didn't stay there very long, but that was kind of a sort of hover motion before it spun and came back down. Let's do another one just to be sure. Okay, I've got a few here. Let's test them. Okay, so they both do this kind of little spin, hover for a moment, and then come back down. Let's test this one for hovering. Okay, straight up is where that one likes to go. I do like the way it comes down, though. Very cool. A bit like a feather. I'll do it the other way just to see if that makes any difference. Didn't sh Ooh. Oh, we had a, a moment there. But I do think that what I'm going to vote for is that... B went the highest, but A hovered a little bit. Therefore, in terms of hovering, this one hovered the best. That's my vote. It's totally fine if you disagree with me, because if you ever came here to visit the Science Oxford Centre, you could design your own design and come up with your own challenge and then come and test it out here on the air table. Okay, so we're going to go to our final exhibit. But before we do, I'm going to come back to that question that we asked you at the beginning. So we showed you a funny image through a strange camera. And we asked you, what do you think that this camera is showing? So I'm just going to leave you just to remind yourself of those answers while we head over to our next exhibit. Okay, so welcome. We are now at our curious camera and I'm going to read some of the comments that you've got here. Molly thinks it's a thermal camera. Okay, good words. Thinks it's infrared. Wow, you really know your science words today. Red is hot, yellow is medium and green is cold, says Ruby. So we're starting to think about what the colours mean. Ollie thinks it's showing heat and he says red is the hottest. Amelia from Chestnut thinks it's body temperature. Yeah, so we do. We did have a body. It's actually Emily's body, when my camera assistant today. 
Sophie for St. Christopher's one as if the person has been running because their face looks flushed. Do you remember, Emily? Had you been for a run? No, but she's often flushed, she says. Maybe she'd been working super hard that day. She always does. Um, Isla or Isla, I hope I say your name right, thinks that it's parts of the body that show heat or cold. Absolutely. Body heat, white is the hottest. Really great answers. And you are all spot on. This is a heat detecting camera, a thermal camera, an infrared ca camera. They are all correct ways to describe what this sees. And we did have a body, Emily's body, and it was indeed shown that the hottest part. So, for example, here you can see for me, it's my face. Um, I was admiring this earlier. It looks like I've got kind of rainbow hair, which I'm kind of into. Um, you can also see that there is a key. So you, some of you looked really carefully and spotted that, yes, white and red are the hottest thing you're going to see on here. Greens and yellows are mediums and then light blue and dark blue are the colder objects. So we also have these two hands down here. One of them is hot and one of them is cold. You can probably guess by looking in the image there that this one is this one and this is the cold one because you can see the heat sort of glowing around it. So if you came here to the science the centre, you'd be able to come and do some experiments, things like maybe I can warm my hands up and have a look in there. This thing here shoots out warm air so you can do some experiments and play around with that as well but we do have some cool things to show you in our camera but we're going to use a mobile one so that i can compare and show you two different views so i'm just going to step over to the side here to show you a couple of experiments so first of all i'm going to show you something cold so i'm not going to show you it in the camp the infrared camera yet because i want you to have a little guess in your head just a quick one of what colour you think this will be. So I've got some ice cubes in a cup. Ice cubes are very cold. So have a quick prediction what you think they'll look like and then I will show it to you in the infrared camera. Here we go. Okay, so we've got a super dark blue compared to the rest of my body. If I put my hand on the cup and just hold it there for a moment, then we can see that the heat from my hand is leaving and going into the cup. The coldness that's inside is seeping that heat away from my hand. I've got heat transfer going on here. And then look at my hand. You can see cold patches that are left behind from that heat being pulled out of my hand by the cold. Pretty cool, right? So if we look at a individual ice cube, they're a bit wet and slippery. Hopefully I can get one out. I've got two stuck together. Oh, I've got a splash. Where am I? Here we go. Really, really cold, especially compared to my head up there. So what I'm going to do is just something a bit silly, really. I'm going to give myself a little ice cube makeover. So here we go. I'm going to give myself some eyebrows and a little nose and a big smile down here. <laughs> you can't really see what I'm doing in the normal camera, can you? But when you look onto the infrared camera, you can really see where the heat has been taken away from my face from the ice cube. I just got some water in my eye. That's okay. Okay, so I am a bit wet, but that's fine. I'm going to show you another experiment. So this one, I'm going to show you two different materials. I have one here and one here. So one of them is see-through. I can see you, you can see me. We can use words like transparent to describe this material to regular light. Whereas this one, this is a, a bin liner opaque right light doesn't travel through this one light that we can see with our eyes doesn't travel through it and therefore i can't see you now when i hold this up into the infrared camera i wonder if you can just make a guess what you think will happen it doesn't matter if you don't know i just want you to have a guess and then we'll check it out okay so i'm going to bring the infrared camera back and i'm just going to show you the first so here we go three two one and back down okay maybe that isn't what you expected i'll do it one more time so in the regular camera of regular light i can see you but it's gone completely opaque in the infrared camera now if i do the other material you may want to change your prediction now that's what scientists do all the time in the presence of new information and new evidence they might go you know what i've learned something new i'm going to change my theory and change my prediction so let's see you can't see me through this one in regular light, but how about infrared? Let's have a look. Could you see the funny face that I pulled? Let's try again. Okay, so I did this in case you can see. So to regular light, this is completely opaque, 
but in the camera, the infrared camera, you can see through it. So what that tells us is that heat is traveling through these materials differently than regular light. So heat is not traveling through this very well at all, and it makes it almost opaque to heat. Whereas this one, the heat can travel through it a lot easier. It's quite thin, so that might be part of the reason. It's all to do with what these materials are made of. So some of you use the word infrared. So regular light, the type we see with our eyes that you can see in the clear camera where you can see me regularly, is a type of light, visible light, what we see with our eyes. Infrared is also a type of light, and it is it just so happens that it correlates to heat really, really well. So all that the infrared camera is, is a special type of camera, just like the normal camera you're looking at, but it detects a different type of light. And when it shows us the image, it assigns colors to different temperatures. And that's why you see me in a rainbow version through the infrared camera. So I've got a challenge for you in your class now. I'm just going to put my materials down. We did an experiment where we boiled a kettle and we filmed it in the infrared camera. And then we took a series of snapshots at different times and we've jumbled them up. So we're going to show you an image. And what we want you to do is to discuss with your class what order you think these things happened in. So we've labeled them A, B, C, D, E. We want you to look closely at those pictures. What order do you think these should have happened in when we boiled the kettle? So you can discuss it with your class. We'll give you a few minutes. As before, let your teacher know, pop it into the chat and we'll see you back here shortly. Okay, welcome back. From looking at the comments, we have almost 100% consensus that everyone is agreeing, E, B, C, D, A. But there are some discrepancies. So I've got a really interesting one here from Downley School. Year four says, depending on if the glass was empty first, then it would be E, B, C, D, A. However, if it's measuring the temperature over time, then A, D, C, B, E. So sort of backwards. I, I do understand where you're coming from. Again, more agreement across the schools. This is amazing. We had complete disagreement in our first streamer today, but it seems like we've got some experts in the audience here. Let's bring up the picture and we'll have a look. So the correct order was E, B, C, D, A, which is pretty much what all of you said. And hopefully now in the pictures is a bit clearer because it is tricky to do this. What we did is we, uh, the kettle has like a base. We put the kettle on it. We flip the switch to turn it on. And the water in this kettle heats from the bottom up. And you can see that now clearly in the pictures that it starts to rise up through uh, the water there. Again, where it's red and white is where it's hot. Remember, yellow and green is sort of the middle. 
So when we're going to C and D, we can see that heat starting to rise. And then A, pretty much the whole kettle is hot. And if you look really closely in A, in the top right, you can see the steam coming out of the spout of the kettle as well. So really good job there. That does bring us almost to the end of our live stream. So what's going to happen now? We're just going to give you a chance if you've got any questions that you'd like to ask us or just any comments that you want to pop into the chat one last time. I'm just going to give you a moment to do that. And while you think of that, if you pop your questions in there, we're just going to give you a little sneak peek of our exploration zone. So as I said, everyone who comes to visit us gets a chance to come into the exploration zone. You also then get a choice of a few different things, such as going outside to our woodland, where we've got ponds and 15 acres of woodland out there to explore. We have school workshops and all different science topics that we do in our classroom just through this door. And we have live science shows in our theatre as well. We also come into your school alternatively. So at the end, we're going to put up some information about Science Oxford on our website, and uh, we're taking bookings for the summer. I'm just going to give you a little sneak peek around the exploration zone while you think of any of those questions. So, of course, we've got our curious camera. Uh, we've got some puzzles around here. This is Sarah over here doing our tech for us. Send me all your amazing comments today. Uh, we've got microscopes at this station in the middle. We've got a circuit bench. Guess who? Guess what? Over in the corner there. We've got our marble run where you can build some cool tracks and test out different challenges for yourself. Our scarf shooter. This is an absolute favourite here at Science Oxford. Um, again, more puzzles, a spinning table, the air table and kinds of fun things in here. So let me just have a look and see if we have got any questions before we leave you with a question. So I have got one here. Daisy would like to know what a fire would look like through the camera. You know what? We haven't done a fire. Understandably, we haven't done a fire in this room. But I think we could probably do a small controlled fire at some point. If Emily's got, she's running right now. I think we're about to do a fire. So you hold on, Daisy, and we will find out what a fire looks like. You if would like to know if white is the hottest. You're absolutely right. Yes, white is the hottest. Yep. Well spotted. When will Science Oxford reopen? We are technically allowed to reopen from the 17th of May. So we are taking bookings from them. That's for families and schools. So you can head to our website you'd like to book then you can do that why were there different colors around the kettle that's a really interesting point so what the camera does is everything that's in the view it's going to assign a temperature to it so the rest of the exploration zone anything that's behind you is going to have different colors so compared to the things that are close which are hot it makes the rest of the room look cool so when we put a camera into the shot, what that is, is actually just the surface that it's on and the background behind it. You can kind of see a, a sort of diagonal green line. That is the edge of this white counter here on the exhibit. Really, really observant. Amazing. Okay, what other questions have we got here? When we went to visit you, would well, you know what, Zach, we remembered you. Emily and I saw you on the list and we were like, it's Zach. So hello. <laughs> when we went to visit you. We saw an experiment where a box fell off the table by itself. Moonstone class would like to know what is in the box. I can't tell you live on YouTube what's in the box, but if you email us, I think we probably made a deal with you that if you draw us a picture of what you think is in the box or tell us a prediction that we would tell you. And that offer still stands. Um, so you email us. We'll put the contact details at the end. Um, if that sounds really exciting, you want to know what that is, you better come visit us and you can try and figure out what's in the box as well. How can you learn to be a scientist? That is a really good question. So I've got two answers to that or two parts. Number one, is forget qualifications and all that kind of stuff. To be a scientist, you need to be curious. So you need to ask good questions. That is the main thing. Be curious around about the world around you. So how does this work? Why is that happening? I wonder what happened if I change that. That is the main thing that you need to be a scientist. The second thing is to maybe pick an area that you're really interested in because there's so many wide ranges of different types of science. I do astronomy, Emily did biology, it's chemistry, we've got computer science, it's engineering, all kinds of stuff. And then what you want to do is you want to study really hard, try and get some experience doing some science experiments, meet other scientists, and then eventually one day you can be doing real science that contributes to something in the world. So be curious and study hard. That's my two things. What else have we got? Does the infrared camera need a battery? This one is plugged into the wall, luckily, so it doesn't. Um, what would it look like if you put cold water on top of hot water? Oh, my gosh. We've already done it. Where are you? Downley School. Okay. I'm. What we're going to do, I think we could probably send you a video after this. Yeah. So I'm sure we've got some contact details for you. Um, we 
it's not on our website currently, but we do have some resources that we're revamping to make them look nice. And soon, within a few weeks, they'll be up there. And we actually have a video of doing exactly that. So I'm really glad you asked. We poured a hot water kettle over a big tray of ice cubes. And it looks so cool. So we will email that to you. So that's year four. We're going to remember that. Okay, I'm going to light a fire into the camera. Oh, we might be able to play it now. Oh my gosh, what a wonderful team I have. While someone behind the scenes sees if they can find that video, I am going to light a candle. So, oh no, <laughs> I have a lighter in my hand, so let's just do that. Here we go. This is for Daisy, I believe. Oh, whoa, look at that. Can you see the heat like streaming off of that? I'll just move it out. Actually, you can see it better sort of against the dark here. I'm going to come a bit closer. I'm being very safe here, by the way. I'm safely trained how to use that. So you can see the candle's hottest in the center. It's white. You've got the red around the outside, then yellow and green, and then the heat streaming off it in the blue. Do you know what, Daisy? I'm so glad you asked because this is really, really cool. There we go. How cool is that? Great question. Uh, what a hot and cold tap would look like. And again, these are all you're giving us all these amazing ideas of experiments. If you come and visit us, then we can we'll do what we're doing right now. We'll try if you come up with an idea, we'll try and replicate some of them for you. Um, would other opaque materials show the same color in infrared? So I don't know the full hundred percent details of what it is about each material, but it's all to do with how heat transfers through different materials. So I do know that clear plastic, like acrylic, doesn't let heat travel through it very well. For example, Emily's glasses. Do you want to hop it? Oh, I'll just put them on. Is this to clean your glasses? <laughs> okay. So if I put Emily's glasses on in the infrared camera, where oh, she needs to point it at me. There we go. Look at that. So I can obviously see you through the glasses. I kind of like these, Emily. I might borrow these if you don't mind. Um, but you can't see through them. So that sort of clear glass material works really well with those as well. And then we've got another opaque, sorry, move my microphone, another opaque material to test. Thank you. I literally have no idea what's going to happen. I've never done this one before. So here we go. I can't tell because I can't see through it. Oh, so that one is actually opaque. So it's different. The bin liner was different to this one. Can you see me at all? No. Amazing. Great question. There we go. I'm a bit surprised by that one. So it's all to do with the different materials of what things are made of. If you come here and visit, we can try all kinds of things in there. So are we getting any luck with our hot and cold water video? There we go. We gave it a little stir at the end. As well. How cool did that look? We were very impressed when we when we tried that experiment. So thank you so much for asking that. I see some other people wanted to see it as well. So I'm glad that we've got that. When we were doing live stream, this was a special thing for British Science Week. We've never done this before. We've done a lot of practicing, a lot of camera angles and trying all that stuff out. So far, it's gone really well. Um, we hoped that was the case and it might be something we do more of in future. But we do love to see people in person. And to, I mean, we're all about a hands-on exploratory centre. So having people here to do the experiment yourselves is the ideal situation. Uh, but there may be opportunities where we do it in the future. Someone's asking me, Jana says, what is your favourite ever experiment and why? Oh my God, that's so hard. Favourite ever experiment. Um, I really like, I was going to say playing with, no, carefully trained adult experiments with liquid nitrogen. Has anyone ever heard of that stuff? It's like, this, it's nitrogen, which usually we experience in everyday life as a gas. It's in small amounts in the air around us. But if you make it really, really, really cold, it behaves like a liquid. And you can put all kinds of things in there. So as part of my job before, what I've had to do is um, you, I put a rose in there. So a rose head and you put it into the liquid nitrogen. You can probably find some videos of stuff with liquid nitrogen on YouTube. Um, and it goes like ice. 
and then you can smash the rose head on the it's like glass the head the flower shatters like glass there's all kinds of cool experiments if you put metal in there it shrinks so i used to have a big metal ring and a ball on a stick and before it was cold they'd fit straight in and i'd make them cold you couldn't really tell but all cold things shrink a little bit when they get colder and then the ball wouldn't fit through the hole anymore and then i'd heat it back up and they would fit so i used to love stuff like that things that we call discrepant events and some of those have happened today which is where what you expect to happen isn't what happens. That is the best part of science. When you ask a curious question and the outcome's not what you expect and you have to figure out why, they're my favorite types of experiments. So I think we probably have to let you go at some point today. I'm so grateful for all of your wonderful questions though. Um, you will have our contact details. I'm gonna bring that up now, um, or at the end, sorry, so that you, if you have any further questions, then just let us know and we'll be happy to answer them. Maybe we can do a couple of videos and show you some further experiments or you can come visit us. I've seen a lot of you have said that you had a great time and you'd like to come see us. Um, someone's asking me what type of fossils materials. I am rubbish at fossils, but Emily's just gone to get me the leaflet, which will tell us. I study astronomy uh, and space. I don't know an awful lot about rocks, even though I should know about perhaps meteors and things like that. Um, get at least a couple of them up. I know one of them is called Fool's Gold. The really shiny one because it's not real gold so one of them the one that was looked a bit like a, the one that looked most like a rock or a fossil i can't even say this rastellum cretaceous probably um are quite odd looking things from the jurassic period and i think you can probably try and remember what type of creatures were around during the jurassic period that are mainly found in madagascar they were home to oysters millions of years ago millions millions of years ago these oysters were like our modern day oysters and lived in shallow coastal waters. They fed on food particles that they filtered out from seawater. Pretty cool. So that, yeah, someone said this used to be alive. So I think you were pretty close there. Okay, so we are going to have to say goodbye now, I'm afraid, but I actually have a question to leave you with. So we're gonna bring up an image here just to pr prompt you with this question. So it's something I want you to discuss with your class or even perhaps take home, discuss with your family and friends or just think about through British Science Week, which is what else do you think heat detecting cameras could be used for? So an example here is we have a firefighter using a heat detecting camera to find an injured person through thick smoke. That's one use. What other uses? I know you're gonna come up with some brilliant ideas from your questions today. So what other uses could there be for heat detecting cameras? Okay, so we're gonna bring up our contact details now. You can use these to send us your answer to that question. Any further questions you have, um, your ideas about what was in the box. <laughs> and you can also see our website down there if you'd like to book and come and visit us for the summer. So thank you so much. We hope you enjoy British Science Week and the rest of your day.